Yo, what's up, Scrubs? We are back with Yu-Gi-Oh! Ultimate Master World Champion 1996, and I am going through all the starting decks in order of the selection screen. So that means we are starting with the Dragon deck, which uses the Dragon's Roar structure deck, you know, from real life as the base. It has a Red Eyes engine and an Armed Dragon engine, so you know it's going to be good. And, you know, it, it, it's filled out kind of nicely. You know, it's rocking a play set of Mass Dragons and Stamping Destructions. And there's also, you know, two Luster Dragons and two Noblemen of Crossout. So you got, you got a pretty solid base in there. Other than that, at the beginning of each game, you get the true GX starter deck and 3000 DP to supplement your chosen structure deck. Actually, the dragon deck is one of the biggest beneficiaries from the true starter deck because it gives it a third luster dragon, a mirage dragon, a spear dragon, and a couple of defensive traps to help your arm dragon level 3 stick around until the standby phase. You also have access to a brain control, which can help you ramp into a level 5, and a tribute to the doomed, which can help you get rid of extra tribute monsters that get stuck in your hand. Okay, so looking at the deck, it really has a lot going on, but if we take out some of the red eye stuff and go full armed dragon, then we can put together a pretty balanced list right off the bat. And in order to capitalize on Arm Dragon's effect, we need to have a surplus of fairly strong monsters in our hand, and the best way to achieve this is through the use of Thunder Dragon. This allows us to thin our deck out of bricky draws, pad our hand to discard with Arm Dragon or Tribute to the Doom, Lightning Vortex or whatever, and on top of these more practical applications, you can also use Thunder Dragons to farm DP. And for each tribute summon, you get an extra 80 DP, and you can deploy this in games where you have a commanding position and are just chilling, basically. So, Thunder Dragon appears in Metal Raiders, which is only 150 per pack, so you have 20 packs to find three of them, and you're probably going to reset for a bit to find, you know, all three. Mirror Force also appears in this set, but is banned in the default ban list. So unless you're going to use the no ban list glitch or, you know, some sort of cheat, um, I would reset for three, but if you get a Mirror Force and two Thunder Dragons, you might just settle for that. So once you have three Thunder Dragons, you can start to build your deck, and I don't recommend keeping the creature swaps in, considering it's only really good with Mass Dragon, and it doesn't really help you in most situations because even if you do swap your mass dragon and kill it, your level 3 is going to be vulnerable during your opponent's next turn. So even best case scenario, creature swap doesn't really get the job done and your opponent doesn't really always have the best monsters. I also included a luster dragon number 2 for more armed dragon discard targets and you can also just tribute summon it for extra DP. And this also gives us a pretty strong dragon lineup for near 100% utility with Stamping Destruction and Dragon's Roar. Pretty much Thunder Dragon is the only non-dragon, ironically. And in terms of gameplay, this deck has a really consistent strategy, and that strategy is just sticking an Arm Dragon level 5 and popping things on the field. And I felt like I got Arm Dragon level 5 basically every single game, either through mass dragons to find a level 3 once they've exhausted all their attacks, or I could tribute summon it through a revived twin-headed behemoth on the standby phase, or you can like snatch or brain control an opponent's monster and, you know, sacrifice it for, you know, Arm Dragon or even a Thunder Dragon uh, main phase 2. And the Thunder Dragons and the Spear Dragon really allows you to apply constant pressure and sort of exhaust all of your opponent's traps like Sakuretsu Armor or Trap Hole or something. So that helps you get your level 5 in play and stick it, you know, sort of in the later game. And I actually didn't think I would use 
Arm Dragon level 5's effect that much, but I find myself popping a lot of things like, you know, Shining Angels or Spirit Reapers, things that get left face up on the field. And you also have some tools like Swords of Revealing Light and Ceasefire, which help you reveal your opponent's face down monsters and use level 5's effect during the main phase, helping you get more direct attacks in. And this deck is perfectly good enough to run through the game at this point, but when it comes to upgrading the deck, if you're going to stick with the armed dragons, I would get a third level 3 and a single copy of armed dragon level 7, which will help you deal with larger threats and give you a big sweeper every once in a while. Sticking purely to the armed dragon archetype, a competitive list would look something like this and pretty much just uses more high-end options like Breaker the Magical Warrior, Tribe Infecting Virus, and Sangan to replace creature slots, and more optimized spell and traps in the trap slots. And you're not really too far off, which is one of the best things about this deck, which you can reach the true optimal form relatively quickly, at least compared to other decks. But that also means you will hit a plateau pretty quickly, and if you really want to stick to the dragon archetype, there are pretty much two other prevalent dragon strategies. You can make some sort of variation of a Lord of D deck, which can turbo out things like Blue Eyes White Dragons and Tyrant Dragons through the Flute of Summoning Dragons or fusing him into a King Dragoon and then dropping them for free, you know, either way. And the other dominant dragon deck is a Horus dragon deck, which is a lockdown sort of strategy which you combine Horus and his ability to negate all spells, and you accompany it with something like a Jinzo or Royal Decree to make a pretty unbreakable board and will lock most opponents out of the game. And so yeah. That's sort of what you're looking into by picking the dragon deck, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask or even post a cool deck list in the comments if you see one out there. The next deck in line is the zombie deck, and after going through all of them, it will be time to rank them, so stay tuned and... Did you hear that? <laughs> 